Hello, Paul Case here. It's uh, Thursday, January 25th, I think. We've been working on my pickup. Kevin's just now leaving. Uh, didn't, didn't do a lot today. This morning was kind of a wash. I did find out that my truck got numerous other problems. Probably gonna wind up being parted out. So it won't be long you'll see me taking the hay bed off from it or having it done and putting it on uh, that gray pickup that I bought. Somebody asked me how many tractors I have and I wanna be real honest with you, I don't know. And I have no intention on counting, but I'll introduce you to them. So here goes, it's gonna be a quick one. 1494, bought this, this is a Case International. It's built on the David Brown uh, deal that they bought and uh, it's 85 horsepower, we use that. This tractor here is a just an M farm all. <clears throat> my uncle gave me this tractor. It belonged to my grandpa on my mom's side. That man's name was Henry Sylvie. Henry used that tractor to pull a New Holland haybine with a lot and grind feed. He was a dairyman. That was my grandpa's tractor. It's got a problem. The first one runs. This one here, the motor runs. It will roll but it has a gear in the front of the transmission or something that's locked up that kills the motor if you let the clutch out, even if it's out of gear. This tractor over here is a 580B case hydrostat. It's a construction tractor. Bought it years ago when I was growing chickens to clean chicken houses out with. The hydro one, it's really, really handy. I use it to move hay with and whatever I need. It had a hydraulic tamp on it and they took it off. So they fluted both the back tires and it still wasn't heavy enough. It's got a whole rack of suitcase weights on the bottom. Five wheel weights and four more suitcase weights hanging on it. And if you hook the bucket into the right thing, you can still pull the back wheels off the ground. 580 case. This tractor here is a Farmall Regular. Uh, I put the back tires on it. The back tires were rotted completely off when I bought it. Didn't buy it. Had it give to me. A friend of mine, Roger Chester, gave me this. Um, it is a regular. The F series tractors have a gearbox here, and the regulars had an exposed steering gear. I did repower that with a 13 horse Honda. It it works. Has a runs on a belt. <laughs> Uh, so that was a farm all regular. This tractor here also had belonged to Henry Sylvie. My mom remembers this tractor when she was growing up. This is an 8N. It was the everything tractor, chore tractor, whatever. And it was the four-wheeler that they went and fetched the cows up to milk them with. So <clears throat> that was Henry Sylvie's 8N Ford. So that one's become affectionately known as Henry Ford. These two tractors in front of it are both H Farmalls. Both of these tractors belong to men named Don. This tractor had belonged to Don Case. He was my uncle. Uh, he, he got involved in an accident and was killed in the early 80s. And my cousin had this tractor and uh, he gave it to me several years ago. And the head was cracked on it. I fixed the head, it works. That tractor there was Dawn Boyers. Dawn was a deacon at a, a church that I pastored called Swarsbury Baptist Church. Said it, this tractor had belonged to his dad and uh, they had bought it when it was just a couple years old and never been off their farm. Uh, that tractor right there still has the knobs on the back of the steering wheel. I didn't know they even put those on a H farm on. This tractor is a W6 McCormick Deering. Uh, they are the same motor as a M Farmall. This tractor I bought at a man named J.R. Edwards estate sale. Um, <clears throat> back when, not long after Goodrich moved out of Miami, Oklahoma. And J.R., I believe J.R. had passed away when they had that sale and his family sold this tractor to auction. 
The motor was stuck on this tractor when I bought it and I gave a hundred dollars for it. It was the very first tractor I ever owned. I bought it and brought it home, got the motor loose on it and uh, it still runs. I was using it to grind feed with not long ago. This tractor here, I've had a couple years. It has a front end loader that's farther down in this building. Uh, it's a 585 XL Case International made in Doncaster, England. Uh, has air conditioning and everything. Uh, bought it to do dusty work with that I didn't need a lot of horsepower with like spraying and raking hay and things in that kind of a manner help me stay out of the dust i'm getting older but i'm not getting better and it doesn't take very much of being in the dust anymore to really really aggravate my sinuses and have my head plugged up i probably sound a little bit like that right now <clears throat> we walked by a tractor there that is in my barn but i do not own this one i do own this is a 1086 International. You'll notice this one has the extra stripe. I believe it to be about an 81 model. I bought this at uh, Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. I'm assuming it's kind of a low hour tractor because of some things on it that don't show hardly anywhere. You might guess it's a baler tractor. We use it to pull that baler there with. Uh, it bailed, I'm gonna say 90% of the hay we bailed this year with that rig right there. Uh, 1086 is uh, 135 horsepower or something like that. Really good tractor. This tractor here is the second tractor I ever owned and I've owned it twice. It's a 706 gas. It had a cab on it. We pulled the cab off so I could store it a little easier and I uh, thought I might actually use it for some things if I had it to where I put it in the building real easy and I managed to come up with a set of case fenders to put on it. Just never, never have put them on there. Uh, bought this tractor in 1989, I think. And uh, we used it in our custom haying outfit. It mowed for several years. And it also pulled baler uh, several times. We had a loader that we went on it and used it to move hay all winter and feed cows and whatnot. Um, I gave $3,000 for it when I sold it or when I bought it and a cousin of mine, when I bought my first 1086 in 2000, he wanted it and he gave me $3,000 for it. And at that time you probably could have got a little more than that out of it. And, uh, I was at his place about, I don't know, inside the last 10 years and was talking with him and he said, I asked him if he's still using it because he got him a John Deere with a cab on it, air conditioning. He said, nope. He called me a couple weeks later, said, if you want it, you better come get it. And he gave it back to me. And so I've owned it. I'm on my second time owning it now. Um, this is the loader for that 585 sitting right there. And uh, this tractor is Farmall Super M. I uh, bought this tractor with a loader on it and the motor was stuck. I took the loader off, sold for what I gave for the tractor. And then we messed with the tractor and got the motor unstuck. And we were using it to grind feed. So it done a lot of wintertime running. Runs really, really good. Don't smoke, don't use oil. Uh, just a regular old Farmall Super M 53 model, I believe. It's the first year they made Super M's anyway. And so there you have it. That's... Uh, Tour of my tractors. I'm going to show one other one per request of a viewer, friend, acquaintance of mine. This tractor is an M Farm All wide front, you can see. This one was bought at the same sale from the Edwards family that I bought that W6. And I think it was anyway. My dad wound up with it. And uh, it had belonged to Johnny Edwards. He'd done all these bush hogging with it over there on a hill north of Peori for years and years. And there's some things about this tractor that would tell people in the Edwards family that it was their tractor. If you look right there, it's got three weights on the inside of both back wheels 
and it has these braces that somebody put on the drawbar because the old bush hog they were pulling with it was really heavy. And those braces were on it when we got it, as well as the weights. And uh, it does look a little different. It, it got to where it was all rust colored and it, it's been sitting here in this barn for a number of years now but I have no doubt that it would start and run. We, we even emptied all the gas out of it so that we wouldn't have any of those kind of problems. My dad had helped both of my boys fix up an H farm all and paint it for their own. And Scott still uses his and Dakota's has had an issue where we're gonna have to change the whole rear end on it. And he's busy and had never found time to wanna to do that. Uh, so it's sitting over in another building needs a little mechanical work they got the parts to fix it he just hadn't had time to do it and those two boys of mine and i knew that my dad had left this tractor hooked onto a little bush hog setting up in the middle of the woods on a place he had at the time and we stole it we went up there and got it and brought it to here without him knowing it and we got it to where it run real good Fixed it up to where it had switches on it. He let it to where it didn't even have an on switch. You just twisted two wires together to, to where you could start it. And then you pull them apart to kill it. And uh, changed fluids and stuff like that on it. Took it apart, cleaned it up, and painted it. Put new tires, new to it, tires on it that are really good. So it's got new tires all the way around. We gave it back to him for Christmas. And the decals on it, the one that says farm all, Came off the hood of a 560. It was in the parts that I had. And Scott, my oldest son, free-handed the circle and the M on it. We put it all back together. And we gave it back to my dad on uh, Christmas Eve, the day before Christmas Eve that year. We almost got caught. He had, uh, he showed up down here to pick up a load of calves the day we painted it. And Scott and Dakota and I all come out of this building where we were working on this tractor away from the end and go over there to help him load calves. And he didn't even say anything about the fact that we had red overspray on us all. And uh, so he was really surprised. His first words were when we drove it down there to give it to him, I used to have a tractor like that. And I said, you better look again. It is your tractor. He walked around it and he said, I believe it is. And he got on it and drove it around, put it in the barn. I think it's set outside forever. And the first thing he done with it was put it in the barn. And he told me that we had ruined it. And now he couldn't bush hog with it. But uh, I think it would have been just fine. We didn't do anything hurt the integrity of it. So, yep, that is the Edwards Family M sitting there in the corner of my barn. And we've threatened to take it to a few parades and drive it through a parade. But... Uh, hadn't, hadn't happened yet. It needs, uh, needs got out and drove some, but, uh, that should answer some questions that Kathy had. And this is going to be the end of the tractor tour for today. You want to go back and count them up. You can count them up. I ain't worried about how many there are in here. And, uh, I may or may not admit to owning them. Hey, thanks for watching my videos. Uh, appreciate y'all subscribing and liking and leave your comments down below. I love chatting back and forth with you when I get a chance. And I'll catch you on the next one.